I'm going to read a little bit of my book to you, uh, and then I'm going to play you a song from the period that I'm reading about, so you get an idea of what I was listening to during that time in my life. So I'm going to start with my childhood. This is called I'm a Barbie Girl. Some of the greatest achievements in history have been the results of accidents. The development of penicillin, the discovery of the new world. Barbie accidentally helped me make my own great discovery when I was about six years old. I had lots of Barbies when I was little. Okay, so maybe they weren't all real Barbies. Some were imitation, and they weren't all new. In fact, I don't know if I ever owned a new real Barbie. I don't remember having Barbie shoes or real Barbie clothes. Instead, my dolls wore scraps of cloth tied with a piece of ribbon or a rubber band. A shimmery fabric scrap could become an evening gown. The cuff from a cut-off sock could be a strapless casual day dress. I had lots of naked, ratty-haired Barbies, and they all shared one boyfriend whose name was G.I. Joe. <laughs> I didn't like G.I. Joe very much. He had too many ball and socket joints. He looked short and stubby next to my trim hourglass shaped ladies. But as much as I wished and begged for a Ken doll, my parents never bought one for me. Despite the fact that they were a bad match, and for lack of other eligible bachelors, my Barbies all dated G.I. Joe. <laughs> of course, the real fun was in getting dressed for those dates. I was combing my Barbie's ratty hair for her big night out with G.I. Joe when I decided to steady the doll upright between my thighs to keep her from shifting while I worked on her updo. I held the rubber band in one hand and a little brush in the other as I began my work. But I found that she still wiggled a little, so I pressed her tightly between my thighs, and that seemed to help. After a few moments of combing her hair, I noticed a strange tickling sensation in the place where my Barbie's legs were. It felt good. And after a moment or two, I put the brush down and just focused on wiggling Barbie's long, firm, slender legs to continue to create the pleasant tickling sensation. Pretty soon, I was a devoted doll hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> Under the pretext of styling all my doll's hair, I enjoyed the sensation on a daily basis until one day, my older sister Yolanda caught on. I know what you're doing with those Barbies. What? I asked, trying to look innocent. You know what? She continued. I'm going to tell Mom. I hadn't been aware that I was doing anything wrong. I could tell by the tone in her voice that I was surely going to be going to the fiery place for tickling myself. And I didn't understand why it was wrong. My dad used to tickle my neck and stomach, laughing and saying, Gucci, Gucci, while I giggled until I thought I'd pass out. Nobody ever acted like that was wrong. You shouldn't be doing that, my sister said sternly. I'm sorry, I said, and I truly was. Please don't tell Mommy. I promise I won't do it anymore. Miraculously, my sister agreed. I was so happy that my mom didn't have to find out about my wickedness that the first chance I got, I went straight to confession. I walked into the confessional at Our Lady of Victory Church, prepared to make a fresh start with Jesus. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I began with a few of the easy-to-confess sins. Um, I didn't do my homework. I pretended not to hear when my mom said it was time for bed. Sins that nice children commit and which one or two our fathers can easily erase. I was dancing all around the big one, trying to work up my nerve. I knew I'd have to say it or I'd go to hell, so I mustered up my courage and I finally spit it out. I did coochie coochie to myself down there with the Barbie. <laughs> Silence. Pure, unadulterated silence is all that came back from the other side of the darkened screen separating me from my confessor. Had I shocked him? He was quiet for so long I started to worry that there was nothing I could do to remove this sin. After a moment or two, the priest seemed to regain his composure and finally gave me my penance. I don't remember exactly what it was, a few Hail Marys and some acts of contrition. It was a breeze. I was a speed prayer anyway. I could pray like an auctioneer. <laughs> on the way home from church, I felt like I was walking on clouds, as pure as an angel. I wished a car would run me down at that very instant so I could die and go straight to heaven. 
before I had a chance to sin again. I was right to be afraid. Before too long, I would sin again. <laughs>